Uh, it's me. Uh, it was my topic. Uh, it is a video file, about 20 minutes. So I have to <coughs> uh, fulfill the uh, conditions. Uh, so now, this is a um, text of Heidegger uh, about uh, a dialogue with a Japanese. And uh, the center, according to me, of that dialogue is the problem of language. And uh, Heidegger gives the uh, following translation of uh, language in Japanese, kotoba. I'm sorry for my pronunciation. Uh, the petals of a rhapsodic silence. And uh, my <coughs> conversation now will be <coughs> concentrated mainly of, on that expression, of that, uh, it is not definition, it is a special kind of understanding, philosophical understanding of uh, language. And uh, now about uh, that text of Heidegger. It is uh, rather unusual among all texts of Heidegger because <coughs> it has the form of dialogue and uh, <coughs> it uh, addresses directly Japanese philosophy. It is uh, a single one text uh, and uh, of course, the, uh, of course, Heidegger himself is sharply distinguishable. Uh, his style in philosophy is uh, very impressive and cannot be uh, uh, I'm sorry, but I'm uh, okay. Uh, so, <coughs> the peculiarities of uh, text, uh, it has the form of dialogue. And uh, it is uh, a comparison of his way of thinking. He uh, did uh, not uh, call his uh, thinking philosophy. Uh, but only thinking, only thought. And uh, <clears throat> of course, it is uh, a way to be <clears throat> juxtaposed two ways of thinking, that of Heidegger and uh, that of uh, Japanese uh, thinking. <clears throat> And uh, now about uh, the being of language or beings being. Mm, the term, the word of being should be understood as something with a soul, as a creature, as a, a human being, uh, with uh, him or her is possible dialogue. Uh, it is very <clears throat> extraordinary way of thinking in Heidegger, in uh, uh, his text, which are, uh, for example, in 50s, in 60s, and later. Uh, and uh, 
the sense of that dialogue is their dialogue with uh, an otherness, the otherness of uh, understanding of Japanese language, uh, what language means. Uh, language is conversation. This explains the extraordinary form of his work. Mm. All text is self-referential. Uh, it means itself within itself if you uh, allow for, for me to paraphrase Heidegger's definition of phenomenon in uh, Sei und Zeit. <clears throat> uh, so, <clears throat> the sense of that metaphor, petals of rhapsodic silence, should be understood in the sense of all Heidegger's way of thinking. And uh, his philosophy uh, in the 50s, in 50s, in 60s, and uh, later, is uh, an ontology of language which is even not ontology in a proper sense. Uh, of course, a rhapsodic silence, it is not only a metaphor, it is an oxymoron, because silence cannot be rhapsodic. Uh, <clears throat> it is a way to be <clears throat> understood the special way in which language uh, is. Uh, So, of course, uh, the utilization of metaphors or oxymorons is uh, usual not for ph philosophy, but for poetry. And uh, Heidegger has a few very interesting works uh, on Hölderlin and his Dichtung, his poetry. Uh, but we have the standard uh, approach of uh, linguistics as a, an European science uh, where uh, language is only an object. And uh, uh, the sense of that text is language not to be understood as an object of investigation, but as a subject in the sense of uh, European philosophy, as a creature, as a, um, something like human being with uh, uh, him or her is possible uh, dialogue conversation with the language itself. Uh, so <clears throat> language uh, generates ontology and totality in itself by itself. So <clears throat> the being of language should be understood in the sense of Heidegger as a conversation of otherness. And uh, Japanese, uh, that uh, uh, Japanese novel, 
uh, and uh, Heidegger, uh, German uh, language and uh, Japanese language only uh, an example of way in which uh, the language exists. But it is not only example, but this is the way itself in which language is. This is the sense to be represented the being of language. And now about <coughs> language and truth. Uh, language has that special kind of understanding of uh, truth, which is uh, is fetched for Heidegger. Uh, this means that uh, we have openness. Language uh, stands in openness, and that openness can be uh, taught also as unhiddenness as aletheia. And uh, the, that special way in which uh, language uh, may be, this is some way of synthesis of that openness of truth and closeness of uh, word as uh, <coughs> something absolutely uh, certain. Uh, so the conversation of the questioning with uh, Japanese language is a way for the language itself and by itself to reveal itself in itself. Of course, it is, uh, of, uh, is uh, a way to be uh, used uh, the main idea of Heidegger's definition of phenomenon. And uh, of course, we have <coughs> one language in the sense of philosophy and uh, many real languages, uh, such as uh, German, Japanese, and uh, uh, all the rest. And <clears throat> the sense of that is that language in itself contains uh, the opposition and unity of one and many. Uh, maybe it is uh, one of the most important philosophical opposition. Uh, this is, in a philosophical sense, the atom of language, that opposition of one and many. And uh, now, uh, rhapsodic silence, uh, it is a way to be mm, understood uh, silence mm, in a special uh, in a special kind of silence. Silence which creates and <coughs> he okay 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 uh, he uh, used also um, an 
emphasization of uh, metaphor by um, oxymoron. And we have very special and uh, self-referential uh, stylistic uh, figure uh, because it is the petals of rhapsodic silence is a second metaphor and it is uh, furthermore an oxymoron because uh, petals are absolutely mat material, sensual, uh, maybe, uh, of course, visible, and uh, rhapsodic silence is uh, uh, the opposite, but they are uh, unified together uh, in uh, that uh, special kind of uh, expression, uh, the petals of rhapsodic silence. And what is the sense? Of course, it is only form uh, which uh, has that text uh, that uh, Heidegger asked uh, a Japanese about the Japanese language. And the philosophical essence of that form is that Heidegger tries to demonstrate the way in which language questions itself always. Uh, that questioning of language uh, to itself always is its being the way in which it can exist. And uh, it is, again, a uh, very <coughs> complicated uh, self-referential uh, relation of uh, the text to, to itself and to it uh, uh, for and uh, okay, mm, I uh, suggest uh, the following because my uh, time is uh, almost over. Uh, that uh, video file will continue uh, to develop itself. But we can uh, <laughs> we can uh, stop. Uh, I, I may stop uh, my exhibition and uh, to pass to your questions and comments. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your attention. Now the floor is open for discussion. So please, any comments or questions? Yes. I'll make the first one. Uh, do you not think that this text from Heidegger is an example for colonization of form? Because uh, when you have a conversation, I need to give some respect with someone that I make this conversation. Heidegger have no knowledge about Japanese. He have Japanese friends but he have not given time to study Japanese. He knows a lot about ancient Greek. And then he makes this dialogue, he creates a Japanese full of cliches, he citates the, the film from Kurosawa, Hashomon. Yes. And, and at the end, there is nothing with Japan. There is just old Greek at the end. They use Kotova at release uh, his reading from Aletea. Mm. I think when he was, Heidegger was really, really precise when we talk about old Greek. Why he's not precise when he talk about Japanese language? 
How could he say this about Totoba? There is not an example how you not do intercultural philosophy. Yes, I think that uh, you are uh, right. Uh, of course, Heidegger is very criticized that uh, uh, his interpretations are very creative. Uh, in <laughs> and uh, in that uh, sense, one may say that uh, they are a form of colonization <laughs> of. Uh, uh, in your sense, of course, uh, it is. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> it is very bright person, very bright thinker. It is <laughs> very difficult to him not to colonize, not to colonize others. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. It's yes. So big that have space for others, no? Yes, and yes. To, uh, to, 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 to take all the faith, yeah? <laughs> but it's a gunman, you can have a shooting with them. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, all, uh, uh, all which uh, he spoke about, uh, uh, for example, Aletheia, is uh, absolutely argued by... by uh, um, uh, those scientists who uh, investigate uh, Greek uh, language and Greek philosophy because uh, it is a form of uh, imagination, a form of uh, colonization. It's <laughs> funny because how do you make conversations with Aristotle, with Plato, yes. and there is all 2,000 years dead? And then you have the possibility to talk with Japanese that live in, that respect his philosophy and try to understand this, he don't make some thing product to it. Yes, you are right. But furthermore, uh, that his colonization is a higher uh, product of uh, philosophy and uh, of thinking. <laughs> And, uh, of course, uh, it is maybe <laughs> uh, a little uh, controversy, but I think that <clears throat> uh, Heidegger should be understood um, dioptrically, uh, both criticizing and uh, apologizing. Uh, because uh, according to me, he is too great philosopher. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes? I just, I mean, I'm not really posing a question, but I just, it's one I recommend, but maybe we shouldn't think of of the use in, in of language and philosophy as a dialogue. I mean, you're presenting this dialogue, but if you read this dialogue, you don't really get the impression that it's in, it's in dialogue. It's not an open conversation. It's rather preconceived ideas of what it should be about, and it seems similar the way that he makes use of Greek authors. So, and actually, like if you, if some of us like Deleuze and Guattari. They point out like philosophy is not a dialogue. It's the crafting of concepts. And so it's it's more like like the decision between two gunmen, like who's who's faster, who's the faster thinker. So it's just like um, I mean I like the idea of a film board who would subscribe to this very idea of a dialogue, like language being a dialogue, or so this kind of poetic Ground of language and, and stuff like this, but maybe that's the, that's not the best way to 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 read to read Heidegger, and maybe that's not the best way to de decolonize philosophy. Yes, yes, Heidegger uh, uh, said that we, all human beings, 
are one conversation. It is uh, in uh, Hyodelin and uh, the essence of poetry. So <clears throat> uh, his understanding of uh, dialogue is uh, ontological. I am absolutely agree. I agree. So we can have a coffee break and please. Thank you. Thank you.